Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your glorious power that is manifested in our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you are doing and will do. We give you thanks and we give you praise. We love you, Jesus. We believe in your power of holiness and great grace. Thank you for answering all our prayers. Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Oh, Are you excited to be here this morning? Now, we are going to continue to share about I believe in miracles. How many want a miracle in your life? How many know that as you want a miracle in your life and you believe in miracles, you're going to have a miracle? Amen. Now, a miracle is an extraordinary event. All right? It's an extraordinary event that surpasses all known human and natural powers. So it's an event in your life that surpasses known human and natural powers. And a miracle is an event which is ascribed to a supernatural cause. Like when a miracle happens, we always say that there's some supernatural uh, power that has made that miracle happen. It's an extraordinary event. How many would like some extraordinary financial events, spiritual events, physical events, all kinds of events? Amen. And it is a wonder. As a miracle is a wonder. All right? Uh, or a wonderful thing. And so God has wonders and wonderful things that he has store and that he plans to do for you. Amen. Now, I believe in miracles because I believe in the Bible. I believe in miracles because I believe in God. Number three, I believe in miracles because I believe in the anointing. Now, turn with me to Acts chapter 10 and verse number 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. With the what? The Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. And with power who went about doing good and healing all that were of, of the devil. For God was with him. Amen. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. Holy what? Ghost. Holy Ghost. 
a ghost was police. <laughs> yes, what a ghost. <laughs> and he went about doing good, doing good, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Amen. So how did Jesus do miracles? He did miracles by the anointing. That's why I said, I believe in miracles because I believe in the anointing. Now notice this scripture, how God did what? Anointed, anointed Jesus. Now, why would God need to anoint Jesus since he was the son of God? Why would you need to anoint the son of God? Because the son of God is already powerful. Are you understanding me? How many understand my question? Why would God have to anoint the son of God who was God? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Hey, why do you have to anoint such a person? Because he's already God. How many want to know why Jesus would need anointing? I mean, I can understand why you would need anointing. But I can't understand why Jesus would need anointing. How many do understand why you would need anointing? Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, I'm going to show you why Jesus needed the anointing. Amen. Do you want to know why Jesus? I could see Martinique from my window. I don't know whether I should go to Martinique and go and tell them. All right. Okay. You can sit down. I'm going to tell you exactly why. Let's do this thing. Now, Philippians chapter 2 gives us the reason why. Are you ready for the reason why somebody like Jesus would need anointing? Philippians chapter 2 tells us why. It says, verse 5, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Colon, okay? What does a colon mean? It means it's about to tell you something. All right? Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, okay, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Amen. Change the verb. Americano, please. Americano from verse 5. N-A-S-B. Beautiful. Have this attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ Jesus. Verse 6. Who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God 
a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself. Okay? Taking the form of a bond servant and being made in the likeness of men, okay, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth under the earth. Now go back to verse 6. All right. Now that I'm explaining why Jesus would need to be anointed. Because although he existed in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. All right? All right? Verse 7. Verse 7 is a critical verse. But he emptied himself. Yes. So he came empty. He came empty. And then number two, he took the form of a servant, which is a low situation. And number three, he was made, he allowed himself to be made in the likeness of men like you. He became like you. Yes. So he was like now, like a really, really low and ordinary person like me and you. Yes. And such a person walking on this earth would need some extra power to be able to do anything. How many realize that you always need some extra power to be able to do the work of the Lord? Yes. He needs some serious power to be able to live for Jesus and to serve the Lord. Change the version to the Amplified. But he stripped himself. He stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity so as to assume the guise of a servant into bracket slave in that he became like men and was born as a human being and after he had appeared in a human form he abased and humbled himself still further and carried his obedience to the extreme of death even the death of the cross. Therefore, into brackets, because he stooped so low, he stooped so low, God has highly exalted him and has freely bestowed on him the name that is above every name. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you excited about it? Now, Jesus wouldn't have needed any anointing. But in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, we see how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good. So when he was anointed with power, he went about doing good and healing all. Now, this actually is some kind of good news for us. Because just as Jesus did not do miracles because he was the son of God and because he was full of power from on high as the son of God, because he had stripped himself of all those things. Look at verse 7. Philippians 2 verse 7. Philippians 2 verse 7. He stripped himself. Changed the version to the Americano. That means NASB. 
Sean's diversion. Beautiful. He emptied himself. So he was empty. He came empty. He came empty. And then he took on the form of a servant, which is like he's not even in the house. He's not even a boss or a master in the house. He was outside. Yes. So he emptied himself and took on the form of a servant and then was made like men, like a man, which is a bad and unfortunate. How many have ever noticed that at a time you were smelling? Raise your hand if you've ever seen that. You're... By the evening, by the evening, you don't have to get to the evening. Some people start smelling in the morning. Some people start smelling from the morning. When people are dying, are, are going to die, just about to die, they have some chemical reactions that go on in their body and they produce a smell. It's called the smell of death. Yeah. Are you a nurse? You're a nurse? You are versed in it. Okay. Wow. It's called the smell of death. Yeah. The body has to produce certain smell. This, this is if you are experienced, you know that this person is dying now. If a man is nothing. Yeah. One day I was in South Africa. We went to a cemetery to bury a young lady who was one of the fastest wife of the church. And I asked the uh, man who was there. He said, I worked here for so many years. So I asked him, when did you open this grave? What is in it? He said, 40 years, there's nothing. He said, you will see not even, I mean, you, 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 can, you can only get the nails. You not get any. And then some, you got only a bit of finish. There's nothing at all. No bones, nothing. It vanished into thin air. And the coffin is totally empty. He told me, he said, I've worked here for years. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's it. It's amazing. One day I was at a cemetery in Switzerland. And the very pastor, one of the pastors, and they said, in this cemetery, they don't allow certain types of wood, like mahogany and sap, because you cannot use it to make a coffin. Because they need it to dissolve yes. quickly. In 10 years, they will clear everything. You must dissolve quickly. So for Jesus to accept that I'm going to be a man. A man is a vanishing being. <laughs> you might as well call your neighbor vanisher. If your neighbor is called Shanice, you say vanisher Shanice. Because you are soon going to vanish. Yes. Shake hands with the nearest vanisher. Hey. I once watched a movie called Now You See Him, Now You Don't. Have you watched it before? Now you see him, now you don't. They had a spray. They spray on you and you disappear. Yeah. 
And so anytime somebody came, they just pray themselves and they vanish and they'll be in the room with the person. Yeah. Amazing. That is what we are. So how can somebody, when you say he emptied himself, he had no zero, nothing in him. No anointing, no power, nothing. He emptied himself and came. His mother was carrying him. His mother was carrying him, holding him. Baby, baby Jesus. Hey. He was in the hands of Mary. Mary was holding his whole life. Mary had to feed him. Mary had to breastfeed him. Yeah. Our creator. Uh, is he became, he was empty. No graces, no powers, no vision, just nothing. I mean, when Jesus would look around, he said, "What? Wow, this is what it's like to be a man. This is what it's like to be a man. It's not easy at all. When Jesus became a teenager, he started seeing all the beautiful girls. So, wow! He said, no, 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 no. He made a phone call to his father. And he said, Father, it's not easy to be a man. Please, I don't want to stay here for more than 35 years. Can you shorten the time here? I don't want to be 70. I don't want to be 50. I don't want to be 60. I don't even want to be 40. I want to get out of here fast. He emptied himself. Beautiful girls. Even angels, when angels in heaven saw the beautiful girls on earth, they left heaven and came straight down. How much more you and I? No, 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 no. Too difficult. And then he took on himself the form of a servant. A servant said, hey, come. Then you come. Hey, look, come and uh, repair my roof. Repair my roof. Jesus climbing the roof, nailing. Hey, the creator of heaven and earth. Hey, you, I need a wardrobe. Come and, come and. Hi, you, you there, come. Come and uh, fix my, my table. Come and fix my wardrobe. The one who made the tree which made the wood. When they call it, he will run. The servant. Servants run. Hey. No, this is something. Something fantastic. When people wanted coffins, they would call you, hey, come make a coffin. Furniture. We'll call him and say, look at the furniture, it's not straight. Why did you do it like this? I was making a simple chair. When will you learn how to do the right thing? Last week I came here to the chair. When I sat, I fell on it. I fell through the chair. And Jesus was listening to people blasting him all the time. Small boy, come. They were asking Jesus to apologize for making this bad choice. And Jesus would say, sorry for left. And then he was made in the likeness of men. He used to have erections. No, this is too much. He liked eating, he liked resting, he liked drinking, everything.
He was made in the likeness of men. So now, how was he going to do anything powerful or show? That's why he needed to be anointed with the Holy Ghost. Without being anointed, I mean, this is too low. Servant man empty. Empty servant man. So this, whatever Jesus did, that's why Jesus said, the works that I do, shall you do also. Because he did not do any works because he was the son of God. But he did works because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit that was upon him, which is the same anointing that is available to you and to you and to you and to you. Yes. 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 So that's that's what gives us the confidence. Is that the, the reason for the power is the same reason that you can have power to do all these things. Hallelujah. And so he said how God anointed Jesus. You see, there was a meeting in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You know, there's few times, just two or three times in the Bible where God speaks about himself in the plural. One was when he wanted to make man say, let us make man. Let us make man in our image. Genesis. Hey, brother, on the matter of on the thing there, let us make man. Then another time, which is one of the only other times, he said, who will go for us? Whom shall I send? Yeah. Who will go for us? You see, this is what three times. He never really said us. So there was a meeting in heaven, us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they were discussing the terrible condition of his favorite creation. The Lord said, Whom shall I say? And who will go for us? Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And Jesus said, I will go. I will go. But then, the Holy Ghost also spoke up and said, listen, let's make a deal. And because Jesus, Jesus told the Holy Spirit, you have the power. You have the power box here. You are the power bank. You are the power. You are the power person. You have the power. Our Holy Ghost said, "Yes, I know. I know. I have the power." Because remember, in the beginning, the Spirit moved over the face of the deep. Oh yes, power. Power belongs to God. I heard it twice. Power belongs to God. So Holy Ghost said, "No problem. I know that I am the one who has the power." You go first, and I'll join you. And we'll do some, we'll do some wonders, some tricks on earth and to just baffle them a bit, and then we'll check out. Yeah. So that was a deal. And the father was listening to the son and the Holy Ghost. They were discussing, who will go for us? Whom shall I send? Then said, I hear am I sent him. So that's why the Bible says, Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. So then Jesus came. He was born. He was born in Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem. Now, when he was born in Bethlehem, here's a house. He was in the house. He was born. Next door, somebody was selling bread. And they didn't know that the creator is next door, has come next door. Hey! 
somebody was doing his business on, on the roadside. He didn't know that God has descended into this world just in the next room. And they carried on doing every normal business as though the Son of God, the God creator has actually come. You know, I keep telling you, God is not trying to impress you. So then Jesus grew and many things. One day he just got missing from the house. They said, where, 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 where is he? He was in the temple. He was asking them questions at the age of 12. He was testing them. Oh, yes. So when we got to about 30, 30, that's the age where people became rabbis. You couldn't be a rabbi before you were 30. Yes. Yes. And you start being a carpenter from about 16. Yeah. An apprentice. Yes. And 30 was the age where you mature. You are like a rabbi. You can have disciples from that age. Yes. So around that time, he heard that evangelist John Baptist was having a crusade by the Jordan River. And he said, you know what? I'm going to attend. Because wherever, wherever there is an anointing, I can't be absent. I can't be absent. I, I'll be part of it. So he went to the crusade. And evangelist John Baptist was preaching powerfully. Hey! And then as John Baptist was ending, he did an altar call. He said, if there's anybody here, you know that you need to turn around. You know you need to humble yourself before God. You know you need to be cleansed from your sins and your wickedness. If you are here, lift up your hand. And Jesus lifted up his hand. And somebody may ask, well, why would Jesus respond to such an altar call? How could Jesus go forward? But he went forward. And when he went forward, John the Baptist, and John the Baptist said, anyone who, who you believe, you, you know you need to change today. Come. I will baptize you. When, when you go into the water and you come out, it means you are changed. It's a revelation. It's a sign. It's a token. It's a token of a change. It was a new, it was a new thing. No one had been doing baptism before. But that was John's style. He said, it's a token of change. It's in the realm of the spirit. And Jesus said, yes, I'm for everything. I like everything. I like all the altar calls. I'll go forward for every altar call. When Jesus, it was Jesus' turn, he turned to me and said, so Are you repenting? When he saw in the realm of the spirit, he said, No, this is the Son of God. I can't, I can't, I can't baptize. I am, I, that's why he said, I am not fit to untie. He saw that he rather was a sinner. The sinner was about to baptize a good person. <laughs> Can you imagine doing an altar call and you invite people and then when the person comes, you realize that he rather has to pray for the pastor. And Jesus told him, listen, don't say anything now. Don't say anything now. You need to keep it quiet. So just, just do the baptism. Just do the thing now. I don't want to, and, and he said, don't 
start anything now. And you see, Jesus didn't want to start anything because the Holy Ghost had not yet come. And he was just a servant. I mean, a man, he had a lot of man feelings. How many have man feelings sometimes? Whenever you have a man feeling, you, you feel funny, you know? How many have woman feelings sometimes? You feel bad when you have man feelings and woman feelings. And you feel low. You're already low and you feel low too. Feel guilty. No, I don't know whether you are answering my question. I said, how many of you have man feelings sometimes? Woman feelings sometimes? Hey. So, Jesus, John the Baptist told Jesus, kneel down. Kneel down. And John the, John, Jesus knelt down. And he held, he held his head. He held his head and put his head into the pit. <laughs> so when Jesus, when Jesus' head went into the water and came up, John was shaking. He was afraid. Then suddenly a dove, a dove came from heaven and landed on Jesus. And do you know what the dove whispered? Do you want to know what the dove whispered? Are you sure you want to know what? The dove whispered to Jesus. People, they, they didn't write it. But the dove whispered to Jesus. He said, I'm here now. I'm here now. I'm here now. I'm here now. Things are going to start happening. Wow. You see, nothing had happened up to then. Jesus was just growing up as a man, a servant, and a low person. Yes. As a normal, low person. The dove whispered. Remember, we agreed up there on the throne. I said, you take the lead. I will join you. Wow. Clap for the Holy Ghost. Clap for the Holy Ghost. Are you excited about this amazing story? Oh, yes. Matthew chapter 3 verse 15. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer it to be so now. For so it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, Amen. Amen. When he was baptized, went straight up out of the water, and the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like the God, and lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is man, beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Amen. Now, the same story in Matthew 3 is in Luke 3. Matthew 3 and Luke 3. Verse 21. And then when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying and the heaven was open and the Holy Ghost the what? Holy Ghost Holy Ghost descended the helper in a bodily shape like a dove now there are some people in your life in the ministry 
they are helpers in a bodily shape. They are what? Helpers in a bodily shape. And that's the Holy Spirit working in your life. Yes. You see, when the Holy Spirit is manifesting in your life, I just want to use this scripture to show you something. There are some people who come to your life in a bodily shape. That is the Holy Ghost in a bodily shape ministering, relating to you. Yes. Yes. And usually, such a person is healthy, will be a helper, because the Holy Spirit is a helper, in a bodily shape, Holy Ghost in a bodily shape, Holy Ghost in a bodily shape, or in a physical format. Yeah. And so, the helps ministry, many times there are people that are in a bodily shape, that is how the Holy Spirit is helping you when he says, I will send you a comforter and a helper. It's a person in a bodily, there's a bodily shape. Yes. And that's why you have to be careful with people. Yeah. Because sometimes that person is the Holy Spirit in a bodily shape helping you. Uh, you see, the ultimate work of the Holy Spirit is to help us. When Jesus was going, I said, I will send you another, a loss, comforter. That word means helper, standby, advocate, defender, counselor, in a bodily shape. It's a person. For those who can understand, may the Lord give you understanding. Go in. And he shall teach you all things. Bring things. So there are people that come to your life and they teach you. It's like the Holy Ghost teaching you. And there are people that come to your life and they remind you. They remind, they remind you. Yeah. They teach you and they remind you. Of things that God has said in a bodily shape. In a bodily shape. In a bodily shape. In a, if you can receive it. You see, some people, when the Bible is being is happening practically, they don't like it. Yeah, they like to read it in the pages, but not in their real life. Because in, in Jesus' life, a bodily shape appeared. And that was the Holy Ghost working. That was it. That was the Holy Ghost. Amazing. And so the Holy Ghost descended in the bodily shape. And a voice came down from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved friend. Thou art my beloved friend. Thou art my beloved colleague. Thou art my beloved co-equal. Thou art my beloved son. You got to be a son to be beloved or a daughter. Amen. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. As was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. And it goes on, son of this, son of that, son of that, all the way. So Jesus, 30 years old, and he received that. All that it means is that everyone here can also be anointed. Sit down, let me tell you something. You know, as I come here to say, this is my first time coming. Now, 
yesterday 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 i told you to ask jesus okay three questions yes now as i come here all right uh a question also comes to my mind now as i have come to visit you what is there one question that comes to your mind write it down write down one question that comes and i also tell you one question that comes to my mind <laughs> a question that comes to my mind amen as i'm standing here in saint lucia sharing the word of god with you does any question come to your mind or anything come to your mind one thing there's one thing what one thing comes to your mind? You tell me. You tell me. As you were speaking, I was wondering how to be able to receive that Holy Spirit in the body. Yes. Have you been able to receive the Holy Spirit in the body? Receive it in the way that I'm supposed to like recognize and receive. That's a good question. Anything else? Anybody? <laughs> the question that entered my mind was how do i catch the anointing how do i catch the anointing yes how do you catch the anointing the book i ask can i be anointed like you can you be anointed like me wow okay so you see the holy spirit is showing everybody something and impressing on your heart what about you anybody my question is, how can I do as much as you are able to do in this time that you have? Yes. Yeah. Can I tell you also what occurred to me? Yeah. What occurred to me, what I feel, Holy Spirit, I asking question is that, why didn't I send more people? Yes. Why didn't I send more people? Yes. Why didn't I send more people? Why didn't I send more people to more islands, to more places? Yeah, there's still plenty, 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 plenty. We don't have church in Sufre. What's Sufre? The south of the island. We don't have church there. We don't have church in Sojel. It's also on the south. We don't have all in this island. All in this island. And we yeah, we don't have church in library. And all then we and all these places. We really would love to have churches in all these places. So And what about other islands? And other islands, we don't have church in um Cayman Islands, Bahamas, uh Tortola, we don't have in uh BVI, we don't have in St. Martins, we don't have in Aruba. Stay about yes, Texas, and, Texas, and, and uh, on Brunel. <laughs> a lot of them, daddy. And still, yeah, BBI, British Virgin Island, um, for ourselves. Oh, well, we have uh, Victor there. Oh, help me, guys. <laughs> Anguilla, Anguilla, more. I think we have about 200 and something islands. Yeah, Bahamas. We don't have we, have, we don't have missionaries in Bahamas. Montreal. We don't have missionaries in Montreal. Montserrat. We don't have missionaries there. That's all I'm thinking. They are waiting. The Isles shall wait for thee. The Isles shall wait for thee. Amen. I believe in miracles because I believe in the anointing. Now, can you believe that I have actually seen almost every miracle in the Bible, practically? Yeah. Like the healing miracle. Like at, at different times over the years seen one of this one of this one of the number of them 
Amazing. So I believe in miracles. And I, and I, I have experienced miracles not because I'm a good person, but because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, who is the one who does the miracle. That's why even Jesus did not do miracles of the Holy Ghost came. It was when the Holy Spirit descended, Matthew 3 or Luke 3. Then he started to do after that. And that was 30 years. He was 30 years old. Are you listening to me? Amen. So that is a great blessing. Now, I want to look at something to see how every one of you can become anointed and use the anointing. Turn with you to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Verse number one. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened to ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, five of them were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil, for the lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And after them came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. Now, how to assist and you become used by God with the anointing. How many want God to use you with the anointing? I feel there's a lot of people here who want God to use you. And I'm going to show you how. And by the time I finish these seven points, you are going to be usable. And you are going to be used practically. Are you ready for this? Step number one. The step of virginity virginity hmm. are there any virgins left in St. Lucia now what mean virginity? What mean virginity? Virginity is, they were all virgins. They had the oil. You see, people have the oil, but never use it. That's what I'm talking about today. People having oil and not using it. Five of the virgins never used the oil. I don't know whether I should just leave to Martinique now. You see, you were, you were saying, I wish I could be anointed, but all the ten virgins had the oil. Yes, they had the oil. But they, they ended up not using the oil. So many Christians have the oil. And they don't end up using the oil. Only five of them use the oil. Other five, no, they didn't use no nothing. 
but they didn't have the oil. So there's people here that you do have the oil, but you just, you just don't end up using it. You just end up not using it. Yeah. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? Because people are saying, I want anointing. I want to be anointed. I wish I could be anointed like you. So, ah, we all have oil. But you're not using it. I can't see the people behind you. But how can I see the people behind you? Okay. Oh, I wish I could be anointed like you. I wish I could do the work of God like the way you do it. But we all have the oil. Five of them ended up using their oil at the wedding and five of them turned into rubbish. They were outside. And by the way, you know, this is a true story. My, my nieces went for a wedding recently in Beirut. The wedding was in the evening. It's not morning or afternoon. It's in the, it's in the night. Yeah. Weddings, the, the middle is in the night. Yeah. Why? Because we don't understand why do you have the oil lamp in the night at midnight and all that. It's all it's a true thing. Yeah. They went, they tell the wedding was completely in the night. Yeah. <laughs> After seven, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Bible is real. So how come people have oil and never use it? So that's what I'm trying to take you through the seven steps to see if you can use this oil. Yes. I need you to use the oil. Because a lot of us here are not, if I lay hands, once the hands have been laid on you, you just one. Then that's it. You are anointed. How many have had hands laid on you at least once? And I'm going to lay hands on all of you again. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Now, the first step is the step of virginity. What is virgin? What means virginity? Now, when somebody is a virgin, it is a sign of purity, not contaminated, not trained in evil. Not trained in evil. You get it? Yeah. And there's few left. But there's a particular thing about virginity that is very special. How many want to know what that is? I was talking about virginity. It is a purity that you can't see. People can't tell. People can't tell. Because it's not easy even, even to know whether somebody is a virgin. Even medically. There are some people that you can examine them and not be sure what the person is a person. It's not as clear as, as it seems. One brother got married, you know, and uh, after, the, after the first night, he said, I was not sure because I knew that. She was a virgin. She had said she was a virgin. But I wasn't sure. But he said, no, maybe I'm just with my team. Yeah. 
But then some years later, she came up. She said, I want to tell you something. She said, you, you know, when we got married, I wasn't a virgin. I said I was a virgin, but I wasn't a virgin. Yeah, I wasn't a virgin. I said I was a virgin, but I wasn't a virgin. And she said some more, she said some more things. I don't want to say those things. So, I want to say that the Bible says that we should be fully and blameless before him in love. Put that scripture up, fully and blameless before him. You see, you're holy and you're blameless is before God, before the two finds you both or not. Yes. No, no, no. That's not a problem. Blameless before him. And it is, you see, the essence is that we should be holy and blameless without blame before him. Because somebody may not find you holy. How many have felt holy but others didn't feel you were holy? So the holiness and the blamelessness is in front of the one with whom you have and that is very secret holy. That's what the virginity speaks of. Not easy to see. I look at all of you. I don't know which of you are virgins. So, you have to fight to be holy and to be blameless in the eyes of God. Because somebody may not find you holy. Turn to Romans chapter 14. Romans 14 verse 1. Now, look at what it's saying. Him that is weak in the faith receive, all right? Like, weak in faith means that he struggles with things that he's doing. Verse 2. For one believes that he may eat all things, one eats pork. One eats chicken. One eats shrimps. One eats dogs. One eats snakes. When I went to Korea, Yonggi Cho said that if Adam and Eve had been Koreans, all these problems we are having would not have happened because Koreans eat snakes and when the serpent came he would have just eaten him up now he says 
One believes this. This is okay. One believes that when he is in the ascent and he starts confessing, oh God, forgive me for eating pork. Forgive me for eating shrimps. Forgive me for eating this snake. Oh, I feel terrible. So God, some feel that when you eat the snake, because the snake is a, set, a symbol of the devil, of eating the devil. And start to feel so, oh, my stomach. Verse 3. Oh, yeah. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. That's why I was saying that your holiness is before God. And let not him which eateth judge him that eateth. So you don't do this, and this one does this. Don't judge the person who doesn't do that. For God has received him. Now look at verse 4. Amazing. I'm going to read this whole chapter with you because it's an amazing chapter. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. You know, when you see somebody working for someone, you have to be careful when you pass judgment on the person. Because he's another man's servant. And the man likes his servant. And you are saying his servant is not good. So it brings you into a problem with God. God is saying, you can't judge my servant. I like my boy. I like my girl. You can't judge my boy. You can't judge my girl. Hallelujah. 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 I like my boy. I like my girl. The key of virginity. It's not easy to see if somebody is a virgin. You have to look inside and check very carefully. Hey, only God can look at such things. Verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Everybody should be very sure of the things you do, the things you believe, and why you do them, and why you believe in the things that you do. Be fully persuaded. He that regarded the day, regarded it unto the Lord. And he that regarded not the day, to the Lord, he does not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not. And giveth God thanks. Verse 7. For none of us liveth to himself. And no man dieth to himself. We are all living for God. Live for Jesus. That's what matters. Have you heard that song? Sing it.
あーAnd verse none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. Verse 8. Verse 8. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord. For to this end, both Christ died and rose and revived, that he might be the Lord both of the dead and the living. But, underline this, why dost thou judge thy brother? Why dost thou judge thy brother? Hmm? Why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. Huh? No, no, go back to the uh, step. It's 10, you have to underline, and I think three. Where's three? Show us three. Hello. Hello. No, uh, verse four. Is it verse four? Yeah, who are thou? Who are thou that judges another man's service? You, you, these, are, these are memory. But Romans 14 has uh, two verses at least that are part of your memory collection. Memorabilia. Four and ten. Why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set up not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And verse 10. But why dost thou judge uh, for it? Verse 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Why dost thou set up not? No, no, it's not that. Four. Go back to four. Yeah, to his own master, he stands at the four. Yeah. So it's to your master you stand. You are, you are, it's your master who matters. 
So that's why virginity, eh, not everybody can see. Not everybody can check. Even some husbands that are not sure. Mercy. Back to verse 10. We are still reading. Now let's go to verse 11. For as it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. Verse 12. So then everyone shall give account of himself to God. That's whether you are really a virgin or non-virgin. Huh? Verse 13. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Verse 14. I know. This is another one. I know. And I am persuaded that there is nothing unclean of itself. That's right. That's but right. to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Right. Clap for clap for the Bible. Actually, it's four and fourteen. It's four and fourteen. It's four and fourteen. Four one four. I know and I'm persuaded by the Lord that there is nothing unclean of itself. There's nothing in particular that is even wrong. They say, except to him that esteemed anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yes. Yes. Now, verse 15. If thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy him not with thy meat, for who shall die? When you eat the meat and it destroys your brother, who says, oh no, why should I eat meat? Like some Christians drink. In some, some countries, some, some pastors drink. Pastors drink. I don't know about here. Pastors drink alcohol. Proper, proper. They drink all the time. They drink all the time. To them, it is not unclean. Yes, them is not unclean. Some smoke. Yeah. But if thy brother, brother be grieved with thy meat, you are not working charity. Destroy not him with thy meat. For whom Christ died. Verse 16. Let not your good be evil spoken. Verse 17. That's where that verse is. Let not your good be evil. For the kingdom of heaven is not meat and drink. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Sinners, uh, whatever. And verse 18. For he that in these things serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Next verse. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Verse 20. For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure. But it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. Verse 21. It is good neither to eat flesh nor drink wine nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. If it disturbs people, don't do it. Yeah. 22. Has thou faith? Uh, you have faith that this is okay. Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. You see, you do something and say, well, this is not a bad thing. I'm going to watch this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to... And you are allowing it. And he says, happy are you if the thing you are allowing to go on in your life is not condemning you. That's what he says. Happy is he that condemneth not himself. In that thing which he allowed. So I'm going to allow smoking. I'm going to smoke weed. 
and he said, but happy are you if you don't condemn yourself in the things that you are allowing. Now there's a, there's a formula coming up, which is a master formula for Christians to know what to do. Next verse. And he that doubted is damned to keep his peace. Because he hated not of him. Now this is the master key. The last line of the whole chapter. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Anything you do that you don't have a strong belief in what you are doing, it is a sin. Yes. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. That's a big problem. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So, the first step. Who? Yeah. How do you think that one? Famous. I could have been dead. Sleeping in my brain. But God will just be the same. Another day, and even though he was still They fought me. I stood outside contemplating if I should walk through the door. You see, a lot of folks knew me from a way back in the city. People told it all of those past things. But I know Oh yes. So one another stop acting on the other now and look at me Now, 
across this divide. I didn't cry. Did you us from me? Did you hear us from me? And the lead of the lights is not a new temptation. But to give us to the truth. Step number one is what? Virginity. Be good in the sight of who matters. In the sight of God. Amen. Fully and blameless. Point. Number two. It says, Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 20. Verse 1. It says, and there were ten virgins, isn't it? Which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bride. Verse 2. Five of them were phronemos. Why is that word is phronemos? P-H-R-O-N-I-M-O-S. Phronemos. Five were phronemos. And five were foolish. Phronemos means practical and wise. Practical, sensible. That's what it means. Now, if you are not practical and wise, in addition to being anointed, you see, this 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 is a bit like this camp. I gave you the points at the beginning, and then I'm now explaining the points. That's how this one is. This one, you get the anointing at the beginning. The, at the very beginning, they have the oil. All the other steps to the anointing, you get the anointing at the end. This one, you get it at the beginning. But then you don't use it, half use it, half don't use it. I don't know if you understand it. This one is different. You get the anointing right at the beginning. Half were foolish, half were, well, but they had the oil. All had the oil at the beginning of the story. It's not like at the end, they are going to get oil. But they have it now, at the beginning. That's what I'm saying. That today I'm going to show you how, like, God, many of us are you already anointed, and so you need to perfect your holiness and your perfection in the sight of God. You don't have to be concerned whether people will see what you are, who you are, but that. Really, when God looks at you and assesses you, they find you holy. Yes. Yes. Ah, people 
people will always say, even when you are holy, they will say bad things. So, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. But it's what matters is whether before God, you are living a life of practical holiness before him. Now, the next is that you have to be wise. Five of them were wise. So now, if you are not practical, you will not ever use their hands. Practical means use what you have. Wow. Right there. Wow. Wow. Yes. You see, an impractical person is looking for something ideal, something in the sky. Stars are in the sky, man. Real things are around you. You can be imagining and dreaming about the things in the sky. But what are the practical things? The re I've, I've never, I can't really remember a time when God told me something to do that what he wanted me to do was not right in front of me. Even if he wanted me to even employ somebody or work with them, the person was always in the But it's like to convert that person into somebody who can work. Everything I've ever needed is all around me. Yeah? Everybody I've ever needed. I, I, will, I would love to reach more islands. I would love to send more people to more islands to try and do something. The people that I want them are sitting in front of me. Yeah, not far away. So, I need somebody who is coming. The Lord sent the person in a vision and the person is... Look, those things don't exist much. You are sitting right here. You are sitting right here. You are sitting right here. People are not practical. People are not practical. Whenever I needed to send somebody, that's why I had a camp called, why are you not a missionary? Because I believe that all the missions were sitting there. And the question was, why, why are they not missionary? And you are one of those, right? Yes. I keep meeting people, why are you not a missionary? One of our bishops in Ghana, he said, look, I came from a shop when I why are you not a Christian? What is that? He was new in the church. What is that? Why is a missionary now? So many people affected by that very direct question from the Holy Spirit. Yes. They had an army background. Yeah. Why are you not a missionary? Yeah. <laughs> And you know, you got to be practical and sensible. Not everything will work. It's nothing like that. You know how many stamps in time one mill? You know what a mill is? Like one liter, one milliliter. Yes. You can have 80 million stamps in one milliliter. So with one ejaculation, you can have. 320 million. You can have even 100 in one. You can have four mils, three mils. You got as many as 300, 200 million. Only one way. Yeah. And you have to be practical because that's how seeds are. You have to send and keep sending. Some may not work, some work. If you see, when God was sending Moses to, to Pharaoh, he knew that it wouldn't work. God knew that it wouldn't work. What he was sending him to do wouldn't work. But he still sent him. So I know, I know what I'm sending you. The man I'm sending you to go and advise him. He will never listen. And it will not change. And there will be no breakthrough. But I'm still sending you. I mean, this is God. That's the power of God. 
And so when you sit back in fear and you say, I don't know what to do. I, 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 want, the, I want the anointing. Practically, you need to be practical. I know that I can, I, I can try, I can preach. There are people from St. Lucia who, yeah, young people, people that are going to preach better than me. Preaching. You know me, I, my preaching, you see, one day somebody was watching television, he said, this is not preaching, this is talking. He's just talking. And some of you are going to be better preachers. Higher preaching than talking. Instead of my dry talking all the time. Hmm? Yeah. God is going to use you. Very, very much. We don't have to be tired of trying to practically use the oil. Five of them were practical people. Hands-on practical people. People, pastors, who would actually visit people practically themselves. Actually go. You see, like, I've come here physically. I've come to sit here in St. Lucia to talk to you physically and practically. Guys, there's no other way. There's no other way. Way right on the other side of the world, this year, just a few weeks ago, I was in Vanuatu, Solomon Island, New Zealand. I mean, other, other islands. An island called Santoa. I was there. Yeah, there are more islands there. More. The work is plenty. And there are people with oil. Like you have an initial swing. Do you know what is an initial swing? One day we went to play golf. And we met a professional. And he taught us. I mean, not to him, but he just worked with us. But everywhere, he used to say, I gave them the initial swing. The first swing. <laughs> so you have the initial swing. Swing your club, man. Practically start doing something. Practically. If you don't have a practical man, you can't have a church. A pastor is somebody who is talking to the people. No, I met a pastor from the Caribbean. He said, look, I belong to a big organization. We have the building, but our buildings are empty. There's nobody in the building. Nobody goes to the church. Young people don't go to the church. So as for the buildings, we have them on the main street, on the main road. We have in the center of the town. Nobody goes to church. So when you advise that they don't listen. What is happening here is a miracle. And this miracle, that is why I feel the Holy Spirit saying to me, why didn't you send more people? And then you are also asking, how can I be anointed like you? And then I'm also telling you, you are already anointed. But you need to be practical. Yes. You need to be practical. You need to go to some places practically. You need to go. If the boys won't go, the girls should go. And if the girls are going, the boys should say, I can't allow a girl to go when I am supposed to be there. Somebody's got to be crazy. Why should I sit down and the girls go in? All these islands. It's, a, it's just a simple thing. Get a job. Try to get a job or get some reason to be at another place. And start the church. The church work of God has only two parts. You know, my father-in-law, 
my wife's father, one day he called his son. He said, I want to tell you something. He's got son is a pastor. He said, I've seen something in this world. There are two types of pastors because he has been seeing a lot of pastors in the Methodist Church, charismatic Pentecostal, different. He has known them for years. And he said, There are two types of pastors. Do you want to know the two types of pastors? Are you sure you want to know the two types? He said there are two types of pastors, those who are called and those who are not called. <laughs> hey, I believe you are one of the called pastors. Then I want to tell you that the, the work of God has only two types of work. There's only two types of I want to know the two types of work. Number one, soul winning and number two church planting and church building church work these are the only two things you can ever do you have to just roll up your sleeve and get to the job and physically do the work that's what i'm doing here i'm talking to you every day i'm i'm going to seven islands from here to here to here to here seven different islands talking to the church people this is the church work the church work is talking preaching are you listening oh, i should just go to my i maybe i should just go to martin <laughs> you have to be practical you don't want to walk on the street. You don't want to talk to people. These people doing these things, dancing naked all over the place. And all. You think they don't feel sick when they go and lie down? When they go they lie, they feel sick. But they do it. After they feel empty, they feel sick of themselves. How many have done something like that before and you, you felt funny? How do you feel after? You feel guilty. Yes. You feel a lot of regrets. Hang the hangover. You sick. You like? Did I really do this with myself after alcohol? Like, did I really do this? Like, so you just be cheating yourself. It's like you're just not happy about. But are you going to do it again? The next one? The next weekend we're going again. We say we'll I'll never drink alcohol again. And then we go back and we drink alcohol to recover from the house. Drink alcohol to recover from the alcohol. <laughs> Yes. Huh? Sometimes it takes like two days to come back to a high level. Yeah. When you eat the brownies. <laughs> Tell me, I can't hear you. It's different when you uh, when you sit. A couple of days. And and when you are high, what do you do? Come, stand here, stand here. Yes, from your experience. Uh, 
Can you minister to people who are doing all these things? You can minister to them? So can you dress the carnival way and go and witness to them? You can't do that. But maybe when they see you, they identify with you. They say, you are one of us. Not anymore. But you could dress like that in those days. Absolutely. What did she say? Ah, you show the tattoos. You show all the hidden ones. Wow. Now you are anointed, my dear. You have the oil. You have the oil. Wow. Come, what about you? What about you? Yeah, so... What were you also doing? Were you also dressing the carnival way? So you were virtually naked on the streets. Basically. Almost naked. Yes. Sorry, my voice is a little. I'm just like a pirate, you know, with a pirate outfit and um, this one little piece of cloth going across with my drink in my hand. <laughs> come, come, come. Yes. Is she a, is she an LP? The latest. She's now a lady pastor. Yes. Yes, Bishop. A what pastor? Branch. She's a branch. Yeah, pastor. Beaufort. Yeah. Wow. You are anointed. I told yes. you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Amen. You need to be practical. Amen. You need to be practical. Because you know what all these things are. Why should somebody come from Ghana? In Ghana, we don't have carnival. Never, I've never seen. I'm over 60 years old. I've never seen anything like it in my whole life. We have nothing like that. Bishop, ever. It's now on another level. It's now what? On another level. On another level? Yes. What is the new level? It's now, we used to, we used to have this one that used to cover me, we packed me. Now, it actually goes in between places. Basically, they are naked. Yeah. Yes, Bishop. Yes, Bishop. Yes. Where anything, yes. Somewhere what? Paint. Ah, they just paint themselves. Yes. So they don't wear clothes. Shave what? Paint. It looks like a body suit. But, but they're, they're naked. Actually, they're naked. They're naked. Thank God for salvation. When I witnessed to her, 
and she gave her life to Christ. She promised she was going to get us a drink, myself and my wife. When she turned, we couldn't whatever. <laughs> wow. I own the bar, Bishop. She was wearing that day. I had to bend down my head and turn around <laughs> because it was terrible. So especially in the yeah. But maybe, maybe that is the time that the people are ready. Okay. So when you finish dancing and jumping, how do you feel? Oh, Come Bishop. Stand here, stand. Sorry, Bishop. Yeah. When you finish dancing and jumping and everything, all of it is regrets. All of regrets. it is. It's always regrets. It's always you like beating yourself up. It's like the scripture that you gave us. It's like we're doing the sin and then condemning ourselves in the midst of it again. Like we beating. It's like why did I have to do this? And then your friend will come to comfort you by us going and have another drink. Let's go have a drink. Say yeah. Let's have two beers or maybe we can go and have a glass of wine or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's a comfort right there. So it's like it stays in the same circle. It just goes round and round. And that's it. So you don't get out of it. Wow. Yeah. Thank God for salvation. Thank you. What about the other islands? Who is going to go to these islands? You want somebody to come from Africa. Yeah. Who has never seen a carnival or any of this kind of yes. never like never it, it can, i've never seen anything like that yes. huh look at this saint martin saint bartholomew saint kitts antita papuda Sadeloup, dominica martin yes. saint Peter, barbados anguilla this is virgin island puerto rico all these places yes. and within the island there are more places Aruba, Curaçao, St. Vincent, Grenadine, Grenada, hey, are we going to use the anointing? You see, this is not steps to the anointing. This is how you have the anointing and you can actually end up using it. Okay. Actually, have them and end up using them. You know, as I as I'm here, I feel so. I'm happy, but I feel sad that there's more places, more. And Satan is just having his a field day. It's like he says, "Oh, this this island, these people, they are for me." I'll give them no sense to follow. I'll destroy them. Party, disco, nightclub, dancing, pulling, oozing. How can you explain yourself? How? How can you explain yourself? Yes. He gave you a few years. What did you yes. How many people did you sleep with? Mm. It's not good here. Eh? <laughs> it was just a state. <laughs> did, did you count the number of people you slept with? So, mm. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so. My son is there. Your son is there. She comes to us. <laughs> Thank God, God for salvation. salvation. Thank God. Jesus is the Savior of the world. Amen. Amen. I'm very, very happy to meet you. I'm, I'm, you make me very I'm happy. I'm happy. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored. The excitement when I heard you were coming. The members should tell you. The scream that I made. Everybody was startled in the church. Yeah. Jesus is the savior of the Amen. He's a real savior. Amen. And no one deserves to hear the gospel twice. When some people haven't even heard it once. Amen. Amen. Maybe we should say no island deserves to have two branches 
when some island don't have it even once. Hey. Well. Yeah. It's amazing. Okay, sit down. Do you want to sing that song? The one says that no one deserves to hear the gospel. Christ. Be practical. We need to be phonemous. Practical things. Just do it. Just do it practically. Just go to the carnivals and witness to the people. Bring them to Jesus. Practically. Start the branches. Send people from St. Lucia to other islands. Go and do something. Start again. That is it. There is nobody else apart from us. So if you are thinking, oh, God is going to send an apostle. God is going to send this great what? You are the great what not. You are the great what not. There is no other person coming. You know, when I first started preaching, I wanted to have healing before I preach. Like, and I feel anointed. No, God told me, you know something, just start talking. Yeah. Read a verse. Always read a verse and talk. Yes. And I heard Kenneth Hagin say, he said sometimes he doesn't feel anointed. And now he will preach. And he said, the Lord said, when you start preaching, as he gets along, then you start to see the anointing flowing. A lot of things are like that in the ministry. Just have to just practically do something. And then, as you go along, you see that the power and the anointing start to flow in a certain way. But you've got to start doing it. And then the power begins to flow. Oh. There's no other way than to be practical and to practically do it. So, uh, one day we're going to have evangelism to say, just do it. Just start doing it. <laughs> You know, when you meet idealistic people, people who have ideals and delusions about what they will do and how, they, there are people who love God in their minds. Oh, I love God. God is going in their head. Hey, but to actually just practically do something. No, 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 no. Beginning from today, you have the spirit of phonemos. Number three, practically, know God for yourself. Why? Because he answered Matthew chapter 25 and verse 12. But the man answered and said, Verily, verily, I know you not. He, he told the virgins who had the oil, I don't know you guys. I don't know you guys. Amen. Now, it is time for God to know you. You know, one of the things I find like Orangu, do you know what an Orangu is? They don't know God. This is the main thing. When a pastor knows God, you, there are some things you never do. Like no matter how angry you are, no matter what is wrong, there are some things you just wouldn't do. Them. So I have found that people are not spiritual and don't actually even know God themselves. Yes. So that's how come people don't end up using the anointing, the oil, because right at the beginning, they were given oil. But you see, the man said, I don't know. He didn't say, you don't have oil. He said, I don't know you. He didn't say, you don't have oil. He said, I don't know you. There's a difference between I don't know you and you don't have oil. And the reason why he didn't allow them in, read verse 11. Read verse 11. May 2, 25, verse 11. Or 10 and 11. Verse 10. While they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. 
and the door was shut. My little niece, he went for a wedding in Lebanon, it was like that, till midnight. Yeah. The door was shut. All right, verse 11. And afterward came the other virgins who had gone to buy extra oil. And when they came, they said, Lord, open us. We have oil, we have everything. When they opened it, and then he said, he didn't say you are late. He didn't say you are late. He said, I know you not. He didn't say you don't have oil. That's not the problem. Many of you here say, we want to be anointed like you and preach like you. That's not the issue. The issue is whether you know God, whether you are practical, whether you are pure before God in His sight. That's what really matters. So many, many people, they personally don't know God. They may be in the church, but doesn't mean you know God. What, what's your name? Christina? Everybody calls you? Donella? Donella? D. Okay. So Donella, now you see, I, I don't know you. I just don't know you now. But you've been in church for a long time. So being in church doesn't mean I know you. You can be around, I wouldn't know who you are. I, I don't know you. What you can be? Owen? Your name is Owen? No, I, I don't know you. Now you can beat me at I said, so I don't know you. Now you may be a worship. I saw you jumping here leading worship and all that. But I don't know you. So you can be in a church and God, who you are supposed to know, does not know you and you don't know him. This is a problem with many people. Actually knowing somebody personally. Like when was the last time? Oh, when, when was the last time we, we talked? I've never talked with you before. Where is the other girl who was sitting here? Uh, why are you run away? What's your name? Daisy. Hey, I don't know you, Daisy. You even spoke here the other minute ago, and, and but I, I don't know you. Are you also an LP? You're not an LP? What about you? Are you an LP? Not yet. And what's your name? Tiali. Tiali. Tiali, I don't know. T I, I don't know you, like genuinely. You are sitting in front of me, but I don't know you. It's a very wild thing. You can be in the church and God, Jesus will say, Look, I see. I, when what? Okay, what, uh, what's your name? Daisy, when was the last time we spoke, Daisy? Huh? This is actually the first time we're having a conversation. Yeah, first time. So you can't be angry with me for saying I don't know you. This is the first time we're having a conversation. And then um, Donella. Yeah, this is the first time we're having a conversation. Huh? You spoke to me at the airport in Barbados, but I don't, I don't remember. Six years ago. No matter how you are angry with me, I say I don't know you. <laughs> and how do you know somebody is by your conversations with a person? Your conversations with a person is that shows the level of knowing. The deeper the conversations you've had with a person, the more you know a person. The less talking you have with a person, the less you know. So now, like, I, I've seen I once, I've heard his name, and I, but I don't have any conversation with I, Were you also going for carnival and you're dancing like that? What 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 were you, what were you doing in the in the carnival? Oh, uh, they want to see you. Oh. Turn around, turn around. Um, that we used to buy these these backpacks, these water packs. Uh, it's it's designed to carry water, but 
we used it for other, other we use it to carry what um different types of alcohol ah. so even though the, even though the band provides for you we find that they don't provide enough when you need it so we would buy our own bottle and we would put it on our side yeah and there's a there's a straw coming there's a what there's a straw coming from it from it and when you are drunk what do you do oh Whoever's in, whichever, which, oh, my wife is there. Okay. <laughs> Which, whichever young lady that you can find, that you can you can grab you you dance with. You grab her in the carnival. Yeah, and you dance and you dance with her. And you dance with her. Yeah. just dancing. Oh, I mean. Yes, that is. Yes, that. Yes, that. Well, among other things, you afterwards, but mainly dance, mainly dance in public, yes. Wow. You don't do what? Yeah, you don't know. You don't know that. Uh, you don't know the price. It's complete stranger. And she has no. Oh. Daisy, Daisy, come. Tell us how you are. What do you do? So, Bishop, there's a dance. You know, like, you have to bend. You have to bend. Like, you know, the person who you and if you, but. There's a way that you have to... <laughs> no, listen. Where I come from, there's nothing like this. So that's why you have to explain it. Or should I stay and attend your carnival next week? Okay. Don't stand behind me. I can't see you. So the music, the music has to be loud enough for like the picture of the TV. So, when the guy holds you, but sometimes the guy doesn't have to hold you, just go in front of the guy and do. anyway so the point that i'm making is that i can easily not know you but now i know daisy a little i know owen a little i know donella a little so i'm beginning to know but you see you can be here but you'll not be known and so that comes from conversation. Some of the people you dance with, you didn't know them? At all. At so, all. You, 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 don't, you don't ask the name, where they're from. There's no time for conversation. Then. It's just come and dance. So do you have sex with people you don't know? Oh. What was the answer? Answer the question. Yes, yes, Larry. Oh, okay. I don't know them. Yes, I don't know them at all. I don't know them at all. Wow. So, Daisy, is that what happens? I'm sure. If I go to the, I don't even ask the name, but it's in Russia. Before you dance, somebody you have to watch there's a way that you watch so you don't dance with everybody so for instance like you say the person come behind you you give them a look like and if they and if they're suitable you just sometimes you dance with that entire person for a night and you get drinks and then 
afterwards I never see you again, but it is what it is. Oh. But it is what it is. Mercy. Are you happy about Jesus coming to save? <laughs> Sit down. How many steps have I given you so that you can use the anointing? Number one is what? I can hear you. Virginity. Step number two. Phronemos, practical. Step number three, know God for yourself. Have a conversation with him. Pray, isn't it? Relate with it. Number four, go the extra mile. Go the extra what? Mile. When it comes to the anointing, you always have people who go the extra mile. That's why when you get near a person who is anointed, you will wonder if he is anointed or if he is hardworking. It will always be a question. Are you hardworking or are you just always going the extra mile? Or are you anointed? Are you anointed or are you just working? Are you just driven or you are anointed? Because the person who has the oil, the Bible says the wise, however, took oil in their jars along with their lamp. They had a jar and they had a lamp. They had extra oil. They went the extra mile. So you need to go the extra mile in your service with God. Otherwise, it will always look as though you are not anointed. People who don't go the extra mile, they, it looks as if they are not anointed. Meanwhile, they had oil. But they just wouldn't do something extra. Something extra that others wouldn't do. You got to do something. To be a leader, you have to do something that other normal people don't do. So if you are not prepared to go the extra mile, hey man, pray a little extra. Maybe come to Bible school or come to for homecoming or be trained or come to a camp. If you come to a camp, you are going an extra mile. It's an extra mile. Because there's a whole lot of people who are not here. And they could have been here, but they're not prepared to go the extra mile. There are some people who are here, so today is Sunday, so we are here for Sunday morning. After Sunday morning, hey, man, we can't go no extra mile, man. We have things to do. We have washing. We have this. We have cleaning. We have that. We have ABC. I have no time for no extra, no mile. <laughs> I am always going the extra mile. Practically, try to use the small oil that I have. You'll be surprised that some of you are even more anointed than I am. But only that you don't go an extra mile. Extra miles are always needed for the oil to be used. So those guys, when they went to buy the oil later, they realized too late that you need to go the extra mile. When they got it and they came, sorry, sorry for left, sorry for right, sorry for the door. You can't come in here because all those who came in here are those who went the extra mile when they had a chance. You don't go to an extra mile, you're not going far. Extra mile is needed for using little oils. It's not that you need oil, you need an extra mile. Oh, yes. Are you listening to me? Now, step number five, the step of tarrying. Matthew 25, verse 5. Tarrying. Verse 5. While the bridegroom tarried. Now, tarrying is an old word for staying and waiting. There are two types of tarrying. 
How many want to know the two types of tarrying? There are two ways to tarry. If you don't tarry, you'll never use. Tarrying always comes with being anointed. You have to wait. What is tarrying? Tarrying is waiting. There's two types of tarrying. The first type of tarrying is tarrying for years. Waiting for years. Years of time. Until God gives you in a particular way. It takes years. I've been a Christian for so many years. Serving the Lord and working in the church. I mean, this year, I've been invited to different places. I'm just coming, when I came from Pittsburgh. I was in Miami a few weeks ago. I was in Singapore a few weeks ago. I mean, that I'm talking about people invited. I've been in Angola. I've been in Vanuatu. I've been in Solomon Islands. I've been, I mean, like, I, I couldn't go to all these places. I couldn't preach to people. And I'm here, and where am I now? St. Lucia. Amazing. But I've been a Christian for so many years. Serving the Lord and working in the church. So there's two types of tarrying. It says, while the bridegroom tarried, all these people were holding oil. They were about to use it. But you will need to wait for some long time, sometimes before. So as you are practically doing practical things, as the years go by, you'll be surprised. You see, some of you, you can't even imagine what you'll be like. You'll be surprised what to become of Donella. You'll be surprised what to become of or Daisy. Or Owen. If you if you if you are practical and you and you you go the extra mile, you'll be surprised. When you tarry, you tarry long. It's only those who stay long enough who ends up being used in the house of the Lord. If you don't stay long enough, you'll never be used. I mean, you can do whatever and say whatever, but you'll never be used. It's those who tarry who end up used. Because the bridegroom will tarry. So you got to tarry. It says, while the bridegroom tarried, delay, wait, delay, wait, delay, wait, delay, wait. Whilst he was here, you also have to delay, wait, delay, wait until. God will never use me until he wants to use me. When he wants to use me, he will just pick it. You, 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 you finish. You, you, you cannot use yourself. He has to use you. Maya cannot sing unless I want her to sing. I used to only sing when I want her to sing. She can also, I feel like singing now. It's a good time to sing. And so what? It's a good time. I don't care. You sing when I want you to sing. You are picked and you are used. And that's all. But you just got to wait. So anyone who is impatient, say, I've been around for so many years. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. He's sorry. Sorry for left. Sorry for right. Sorry for center. Sorry for all. So you watch. And you see now, look at the, our church here. Church here in St. Lucia. The God is doing the church. This is not a new church. This is not the first pastor. There's been other people that have been here. It takes a lot of effort. This one does this, this one does this, this one does this. Sometimes the effort is even that the person who starts. You know, most of my pastors or many of my pastors who start things, many of them are discouraged. Because when you start something, it doesn't even work well. Later on, sometimes you see the same thing that you started and you were struggling and thinking that you are not called. is now working and then you even wonder. Yeah. Many churches that we started, the first person to start it, many times we are discouraged. And I always encourage them. Recently, I was talking to one brother. I was telling him, you see, I told him you were a great person. He was so, so sad when he came from the mission. He said, I know I did nothing work. God didn't use me. Now, I was showing him the churches there. How the churches, he started how they are flourishing and they're working. I said, you see now, your depression and all this work for nothing. Is it there or it is not there? It is there. Yeah. That's why as I'm standing here, I just feel to myself, Ah, why didn't we start more churches? Why didn't we do more? More islands. Ah, maybe it's not yet over. Maybe it's not yet over. Maybe I should encourage myself and say, it's, it's not over. It's not yet over. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. And I want to see some of you 
I want to see some of you on other islands. I want us to see ourselves trying our best for Jesus. Yes. We need, we need so the work of God. There's only two types. What are the two types of work of God? So winning and church building, church planting. Yes, yeah, these are the two things you can do when you're working for God. Only two things. But it's going to take time. And sometimes when we are waiting, discouragement stands up. We've been here for three years. We have only five members. Hey. We've been here for seven years. Nobody is coming to the church. And then one day, one day, it starts working. It starts working. Yeah. In fact, everyone with oil is going to experience this carrying. Bible says they all. The stupid ones and the foolish ones, but they all had oil. They all slumbered and they all slept. So, make sure you are there when things start working. Otherwise, you're going to miss the nice part. If you were there when it was all a struggle, why would you not be there when things are working? Huh? Our, our first, listen, the first church that we started, first church that we started, my first branch ever is Geneva. Geneva, Geneva Church. You no, know, it was something, a struggling church. Few people. Hey, but this thing worked. Today, when you go to Geneva, you see that the children of the members uh, are, past, are the pastors. You see, look, one of, one of the church members, yeah. One time, a young girl, she wanted to commit suicide. So, I think they stopped her and they took her to the hospital. Geneva. So when she got, I don't know what she was thinking about. She said, My pastor is the only person. You know who the pastor was? The young boy. He was a first lap young young man. Young boy. He was the pastor. So he said, No, he doesn't want to see anybody. Only his pastor. So they had to call the pastor after midnight. Who was the young, young, young? And he's not very tall. He's you know, quite short like this. So they called the home. They called the, his parents. He's living at home with his parents. So they called the home. We, your son is need, he's needed here. He's the only person who can solve this crisis. The doctor, everybody wants the son. So they called. and said, is his pastor. When he arrived in the hospital, the son is a boy. He has a baby face. He's a little boy. Like I said, are you the pastor? I, said, I am the pastor. And he went in there, and he was the solution. Yes, he was the only solution. But you see, his parents, his parents were missionaries to Geneva. Yes, so it's not in the children. Huh? Let's see, yeah. So, you know, it's nice to see. When I go to Peter and I only children who have grown up. And now they're all speaking German. At first, our church was in English because we came as missionaries. But they speak German, they speak French. So the French side, they're speaking French. Now these people are speaking German. So we are now for, uh, outsiders. Look, it's wonderful to see if you tarry. But there were some people who became orangos in that same church. They never stayed to see all this. Yes. They never stayed to see all this. And we've grown up and we've seen our children take hold of the churches. So many of them. It's amazing. So tarrying. Tarrying in this Caribbean. We will see fruits in every island. You'll see that islanders all belong to Jesus. I remember the last time I was here, I said I was going to give God an island. 
as a gift. Thank you, gift. The population, 60,000. That could be a gift to God. One island. Yes. You no, know, I was just watching you when you were coming in the church, the road. Speaking to speaking. Wonderful souls. People who know that. I've never seen you before. I never knew you. I wish I would see this in St. Kitts and Curacao and Aruba and everywhere. But I believe that if we tarry and wait on this same work, we will see all that. How many are going to be part of the waiting and waiting and waiting till the end? Amen. All right. Number six. And the foolish said, give us of your oil. See, number six is, do not partake in other men's sin. Yes. You must not participate in the sin. These guys, all right, these guys, you, you didn't take oil. You get what I'm saying? You didn't take oil. Now, you are not going to attend the wedding because you didn't take extra. Now, you want to also add me and distribute your sin so that I also be part and then we all I become like we all go low together be careful that low people don't drag you down with them first Timothy 5 verse 22 lay hands suddenly on no man neither be partaker of other men's sins. Now, this word is an interesting word. Neither be partaker. It means to distribute. So people who sin want to distribute the cloud of darkness and add you to them. Don't allow anybody to add you to his mistake. And don't allow the mistake that any body Amen. Don't allow any mistake that anybody is making to add you to their mistake. So there are people in this church who are making a mistake, but don't let them, don't, don't let them. The Bible says, do not be a partaker. Don't let people's failure and disobedience link to you or somehow spread to you and pull you back with them. Don't allow it. People always want, sin is always something, failure is something that wants to drag the rest of us in. So if there's somebody who has been sent to an island and it's not working, let us not allow that failing thing to come on you too and it now spreads and adds you and then you all feel discouraged together. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. Don't allow. You, you are not going to the party. You want me to also not go. I remember one sister. She was backslidden. She would say, oh, when it's time for all night. When she calls her, hello. Hello. I said, hello. I'm not going for the all night. Are you going? I'm not going. Are you going? You see, why don't you ask whether are you going? But you start by saying, I'm not going. Are you going? He's trying to spread the sin. Lift your hand and say, I resist all spreading sins and spreading mistakes in the name of Jesus. Wow. How many are realizing you are just about to use your oil? And finally, the step of ever readiness. You must be ready today. When you hear, now, then you flow. Now, then you flow. Now, and you flow. Because the, the, the man came at midnight. Are you ready at midnight? Oh, no. Well, she should have come at 7.30. Really? 
Be careful who you are rude to, eh? Be careful who you are rude to. This attitude will not get you far with God. God doesn't suffer fools gladly. You can't tell God, come at 7. If you come at 7.30, you are late. No. Stand to your feet, everybody. All right, we're going to go for lunch now. How many are ready for lunch? Ooh. When you are the carnival, do you check your watch to see what time it is? There's no watches at the carnival. What did you say? Till what? Daybreak. Daybreak is the end of the carnival. No, 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 we're going into the next day. So the night to the next day. Night. From the night before, we go into what you call a uh, jouve, like the opening of the day in a dance behind a truck. And then we go home, we bath, and we go to, a, to the carnival itself. And then there's an after party for the carnival. So it's like no sleep. For three days. Yeah. yeah. What about food? Hey, food. Talk. Let me tell you. Yeah, whatever we get on the side of the street, barbecue, chicken, whatever, we just munch on it, but it's the alcohol that's, that's, yeah. The alcohol, huh? Each bun has a tandem. So while you're dancing, so they even provide food for you that, so the, the, the band, the, behind the band with all the music and stuff, there's a truck which gives you food to, to fuel you to go even further. Wow, and who pays for all this? That you, it's in the package, so you, you pay for the costume, you pay for the alcohol, and you pay for the food. So you pay. And you pay to who? The, the band. The band. There's a band. Several bands. Ah. Thousands of what? For a costume. Your food, your alcohol. So the alcohol is the main thing. Uh, condoms, everything. Wow. Lift your hands, everybody. Jesus, thank you. We shall be ever ready anytime to serve you, to follow you, to obey you. We love you. We pray. Thank you. In the might, might, might. Jesus. Thank you for calling us, sending us, using us. Thank you for giving us anointing already. We have it at the beginning. We thank you that we will be there to use us, ready any day for us. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you for what you have already done in St. Lucia. We thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. 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 To God be the glory. Thank you for the glory that you've given to us. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you. You may be seated.